Agora TV. The world is thinking. This is a common Western Diamondback rattlesnake, which, uh, which is all over California. We get a lot more of these calls from Southern California or from the Mojave Desert where they have the Mojave rattlesnake. But usually in the summertime, about um, every week, we'll get a couple calls. Like right now, we have two ongoing cases dealing with rattlesnake bites. Traditionally, the only people that got bit by rattlesnake bites uh, were people who were drunk and playing with the snakes. And so if you're, you know, if you're drunk and you're trying to poke that snake with a stick, yeah, it's going to bite you. Somebody actually did a study uh, one time years ago. They did a study looking at who were the patients that came in with rattlesnake poisonings, rattle, rattlesnake bites, and 78% of them were drunk at the time. Now, I think some of these numbers are changing as we encroach on their territory more and build homes in more rural regions and in the hills and so, or go out hiking. And so now a lot of the calls that we actually deal with are legitimate snake bites. Unfortunately, it can cause a lot of swelling at the area where it's bit. And usually the bites that we see are either on the hands or feet. And um, as you can see, as it progresses, you can also get kind of blebs and swelling on the, on the affected extremity. The only rattlesnake bite that, um, that we've had that has died in recent memory was of a person that was playing with the snake, was kind of holding the snake, and the snake was flicking its tongue at him. So the patient decided to flick his tongue right back at the snake, and the snake bit him on the tongue which unfortunately caused his tongue to swell up to the point where his airway was obstructed and that person couldn't breathe anymore. But other than that, it just causes pain and swelling and we try to reduce it with the administration of anti-venom.